Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to solve what we call an integral differential equation. What does that mean? Well, it means an equation that has both a differential and an integral in it, and we need to find the solution to that. In other words, we're trying to find y of t. So, in other words, let's write that down. Find the solution to that equation, which is y is a function of time. All right, how do we do that? Well, we're going to take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. Notice this is not a homogeneous equation. This is non-homogeneous, right there. And taking the Laplace transform of y prime, that gives us s times the Laplace transform of y minus the function evaluated zero plus three times the Laplace transform of y plus two times the Laplace transform of this integral right there, and that is equal to 1 over s times the Laplace transform of the function. Notice when we take the Laplace transform of the differential, we multiply it times s. When we take the Laplace transform of an integral, it's 1 over s times the Laplace transform of y. Taking the Laplace transform of the right side, we get 2 times the Laplace transform of e to the minus 3t, which gives us 1 over s. And then we have the shift here, e to the minus 3t gives a shift of s plus 3. So we have the unit step function plus the shift of plus 3. All right, now what we can do is we can factor out on the left side the Laplace transform of the function, and we can evaluate. We have the initial condition, this goes to 0. So we end up with the Laplace transform of y times, here we have an s, plus 3 plus 2 over s is equal to 2 times 1 over s plus 3. Which then, of course, means, well, first of all, what, I'm, what I can do here is I can write all this over a common denominator. And, yeah, that would be better. So this can be written as L times, or the Laplace transform of y, times, that would be s squared plus 3s plus 2 divided by, that would be s is equal to 2 times 1 over s plus 3. And finally, when I then move this over here, this can now be written as the Laplace transform of y is equal to 2 over s plus 3 multiplied times the inverse of that, which would be s divided by, and I can factor this, this can be written as s plus 2 times s plus 1. All right, so now what we need to do here is we want to take the inverse Laplace transform. But since we have a multiplication here, what we could do is we can write this as a sum of fractions. This can be written as a over s plus 3 plus b over s plus 2 plus c over s plus 1. Notice this is basically all one product. It's 2s in the numerator times the product of these three, s plus 3 times s plus 2 plus s plus 1. So what we need to do now is find the values of a, b, and c. This is the method of partial fractions. We're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator, which means that 2s is going to be equal to a times the remainder, so that would be a times s squared plus 3s plus 2 plus b times the product of s plus 3 times s plus 1 which is s squared plus mm, that would be 4s plus 3 1 times 3 is 3 and 1 plus 3 is 4 and finally plus c times the product of these two which gives us s squared plus 5s plus 6. Now notice we can equate the left side to the right side. We have an s squared term, an s term, and a constant term, which means that on the left side, since we don't have an s squared term, we can say that 0 is equal to a plus b plus c times s squared. We do have an s term, so that's 2s is equal to, that would be 3a plus 4b plus let's see here, 5c, and multiply the whole thing times s. And then the third term, the constant term, we don't have a constant on the left side, so it's 0 equals, that would be 2a plus 3b, oh, 
and I should close the parentheses here, 3b plus 6c. All right, so with those three equations, we should be able to figure out what a, b, and c are. Now, first of all, we know that the sum of a plus b plus c is equal to zero, which means that a can be replaced by minus b minus c. Simply, if, I'm, if I realize that zero equals a plus b plus c, then a would be, when I move the other two to the other side, minus b minus c. I can plug it into, into the other two equations. So I can see here that, hmm, let me move over here because I have a little bit more room over here. So I have 2 is equal to this quantity right here. So 2 is equal to minus 3b minus 3c. So I've replaced a by minus b minus c. I have plus 4b and plus 5c. The second equation, when I plug in minus b minus c here for a, I get 0 is equal to minus 2b minus 2c, because I replaced a by minus b minus c, plus 3b, and plus 6c. Simplifying that a little bit more, I can take these two equations, combining the b's and the c's, I can write that 2 is equal to minus 3b plus 4b is b, positive b, minus 3c plus 5c is plus 2c. And the second equation, 0 equals minus 2b plus 3b is b, and minus 2c plus 6c is plus 4c. All right, now I simply have to solve these two equations simultaneously. I can do that by, let's see, subtracting this equation from the top one, so the b's cancel out, 2 minus 0 is 2, b minus b is 0, and 2c minus 4c is minus 2c, which means that c is equal to minus 1. If c is equal to minus 1, I can use those two equations to solve for b. I can see here that b is equal to 2 minus 2c by moving the 2c over the other side, and since c is equal to minus 1, I can say that b is equal to 2 minus 2 times the minus 1, b is equal to 2 plus 2, b is equal to 4. And finally, since a, where is it, a is equal to minus b minus c, I can say that a equals minus b minus c, which is minus 4 minus a minus 1, which is minus 3. So a equals minus 3. Which means that I can rewrite this as, on a, that's minus 3 times, s plus 3 plus 4 divided by s plus 2 and c here is minus 1 minus 1 over s plus 1. And then all I have to do to find the solution to this problem is to take the inverse Laplace transform. So if I take the inverse, I can say that y is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of dot dot dot. I'm going to take this quantity right here and take the inverse Laplace transform, and again, I'm running out of room, so I'll just write it like that, and that is equal to minus 3e e to the minus 3t plus 4e e to the minus 2t and minus 1e e to the minus t. And so this then here would be the ultimate solution of our original what we call integral differential equation, meaning an equation that has both derivatives and integrals in it. And that's how we solve for an equation like that using the Laplace transform, which makes it quite a bit easier than trying to tackle that without using the Laplace transform. And that's how it's done.